Alright guys, uh, the reason we are throwing this event is like as everybody knows what's happening in Myanmar. Just a few days ago, 
We have two city, Mindet and Demo Sai. Um, the military is starting to attack them. The civilian doesn't have any weapons. The only weapons they have are swords or the muskets, which they usually use for hunting animals. And the military has started using the helicopters and even airstrikes to suppress the people. And according to the Geneva Convention laws, that's an illegal activity. So we're throwing this event to pray for the Myanmar, especially those who are fighting bravely to the military, and to show them our support. And the, the, another reason for this event is to pray for them. And as well as to request the Australian government to recognize NUG as Myanmar's legitimate government and started, uh, achieve, started the targeted sanction towards the military and their family. There are a lot of families from the military background who have stayed in Australia. So they need to get their big visa banned by the government. And, and the military has to be mentioned as the terrorist organization. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. This is my A good deep way, a season in good, is a bit of a good way. But this is it. That way, you can march just on the other way to get down the road. Don't you get out here? The minute you get people, I don't go down to pick up all right, um, our first program is to pay tribute to the fallen heroes who are fighting bravely against the military. Uh, to do that, I'd like to invite Guru King Kuku.
Hello, Judy Dorn. Thank you so much. Hello. This is in Namanda, Nene. Where to look at a slogan we go, two job, three job, we go, four things to go, and we meet the nine of all people about it. Thank you so much. Thank you for the experience of you. I'd like to invite you again and you will carry on for the champion of slogan. So, you know, slogan is not going to be the sound of the channel. You know, for my little time, you know, 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 so, I think we have a lot of students who are in the area of the area of the area of the area of the area. So, we have a lot of people who are in the area of the area. Thank you. I think we have a lot of people who are in the area of 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 the area. Goodbye! Goodbye! Against me 
Mindai people. Stop military offensive against Mindai people. We must win. We must win. We must win. Thank you so much, Coach Tinkovo and Kelvin. That is such a strong, uh, strong energy. For the next program, I'd like to invite Victory Group to sing a song, The Barber Table.
For the next program, I'd like to invite Ko Teng Win for the media statement. Thank you, everyone. Dear comrades, coup terrorism in Burma has returned and the road to democracy has gone astray. The United Nations has failed to produce a single effective resolution against the terrorist Myanmar military junta violating the international human rights these terrorist Myanmar military junta has been cracking down the civil uprising attacking democracy revolution using all possible brutal tactics more than 3,000 people have been unlawfully detained including Professor Sean Tunnell and other fellow Australians. Around 800 people have been brutally killed by those security forces under the direct command of Murder-in-Chief Min Aung Hlaing. Violating the international law, those notorious Myanmar terrorist junta has been attacking ethnic minorities across Myanmar using what? Even jet bombers and attack helicopters. The cries for the responsibility to protect have been blindly ignored. Our country, Burma, is situation is at stake now. It is now heading towards the full-scale civil wars and a bloody failed state. I am warning again, if the international community fails to stop these terrorists, Myanmar military junta and coup terrorism, there will be the threats, appalling threats will become. Let me reiterate here, what are the threats we're talking about? Environmental threats, drug abuse, another genocide, human rights crisis, Bay of Bengal abuse, Indian Ocean abuse, maritime threats, international trade threats, climate change threats, and also international peace and security threats in the region. The country will be like North Korea. China will play another fireball, another firewood, the way we all are facing currently in South China Sea. Pray for Myanmar here today. We appeal the Australian government to recognize national unity government of Myanmar to condemn this terrorist Myanmar military junta for terrorizing Myanmar innocent people. These terrorist military junta, to label them as terrorists, impose targeted sanctions against those terrorist juntas and conglomerates. Visa banned, freeze their assets. And also we urge the Australian government to take stronger actions and bring those accountable, responsible terrorists to justice. A year ago! A year ago! A year ago! Thank you very much. For the next program, I'd like to invite Dr. A. Bartlett for the Islam prayer. Sydney Mashi Dominamus Nemidazu, a quay, 
The next program is another prayer, a Hindu prayer. So for that, I'd like to invite Dr. Chomye Maria. Dear Lord, 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 this mantra is called a Gayatri Mantra. Gayatri Mantra is a physical, emotional, and mental for the healing process, for the healing of the pain we all are suffering, purifying ourselves and to produce wholesome karmas in the future life. This mantra was given to one of the saints by the, the highest Brahma. Because of his good meditation, the Brahma was happy. Being as a reward, reward this was to be a gift for all humanity. I say the chanting in Hindi and then I try to translate for you. Om Guruva Swaha Bhago Devasya Di Mahi Deyo Naha Prachodaya. That's the only four lines. 
it means O oh God, Thou art the giver of life, remover of pain and sorrow, restorer of happiness, O oh creator of the universe, may we receive the supreme sin-destroying light. May Thou guide our intellect in the right direction. Thank you. The meaning of this Gayatri Mantra is to release the pain and suffering in people's hearts. I can tell you how people can, can be led to the wrong path. If you have a wrong companion or friends, it can lead you astray. If you have a wrong teacher, it can lead you astray. เสียพี่วัดที่เปิดมิสมาลูกพี่วัดที่ลูกสิเสียฮาลูกสิอาลูกนาวะฮาลูกเจ้าดีนะเสียอาสุรัสเจ้าฮาลูกพอดีลูก
Lead us to a place Guide us with your grace To a place where we'll be safe I pray we'll find your Hold it in our hearts When stars go round each night Mind us where we are Lead us to a place, guide us with your grace, give us faith so we'll be saved. Thank you, Deborah Team, for a lovely song. For the next program, I'd like to invite Christopher Lam. Uh, before, before that, I'd like to say a few uh, backstory about him. He is the president of the Australian Myanmar Institute and was an ambassador to Burma from 1986 to 89. Earlier in his Department of uh, Foreign Affairs and Trade career, he served in Burma Embassy for, uh, from 1972 to 74. As president of Australian Myanmar Institute, he works actively with a wide variety of counterparts in Myanmar from government, business, social, uh, civil society and academy, academy, academia. Uh, Australian Myanmar Institute conducts 
major conferences in Myanmar about every two and a half years, concentrating on Myanmar's progress towards its development objectives. This includes examining the importance of achieving human rights and peace as platforms from which development can proceed. We are honored to have him at this Pray for Myanmar event. Uh, Mr. Lam? Thank you very much. Before I say anything myself, I want to congratulate again Deborah Tin. She's got a wonderful voice and a very important message. She's gone. Oh, there she is. <laughs> it was really good. The Australian Myanmar Institute, as you've just been told, works across Australia to try to build all sorts of relationships in Myanmar. You can't hear me? I can hear myself too loudly. Is that any, can you hear me now? No? The people in the back, you're too close to the roadway. It's too busy, the cars on the street. I'm sorry about that. Anyway, we work across Australia to try to improve the relationships between Australian people and Myanmar people. We work with people in, in government and authority, but to the extent that we can do so that benefits the people as a whole. And one of the things of particular concern to us up until the last of the conferences that we had, and you've just heard that we have major conferences about every two and a half years, one of our major concerns was to try to build the opportunity of education in Myanmar to be autonomous and to work throughout the country at all levels with the kind of independence that good education promoting research and thinking can work well. And we were on a good track for that until the 1st of February this year. Now that's gone. What we want to do is to rebuild that, rebuild the education sector, rebuild the public health sector and the ability of the people in Myanmar to cope with the strains and stresses that you see everywhere in the world. To think about how that's going to be able to be done, we recognize that the people of Myanmar spoke on the 8th of November last year about who they want to see govern the country for the future. That was taken from them on the 1st of February, as everybody knows. Now, I don't want to get too technical about that, but our interest is in supporting the people of Myanmar maintaining the right to choose their own leadership. We have that right, of course, in Australia, and when we make our choice, there are many people who are disappointed, but they don't see disappointment as validating a military takeover or any other kind of takeover. So we stand with the people of Myanmar for the right to make their own choice about who's going to govern them and who's going to take the country forward. As we look at that, says me, from the standpoint of someone who's not as young as the people who are leading today's takeover, reverse takeover in Myanmar, we have to understand how to work with youth. And so what we do with universities in Myanmar then gives us access to and entry points to our work with young people. What we have to do is reach to the young people of Myanmar and convey our support to them. We recognize, of course, there are people of my age who are very nice to talk to and quite interesting to listen to, but we won't make the decisions that takes Myanmar forward for the future. Someone who's going to turn 65 years old this year, namely someone 10 years younger than me, will not be the person who decides what the future of Myanmar is going to be. It's got to be young people. And we've got to use our capacity across Australia to reach to people of all age groups. And it's very good for me to see that length, that length and breadth of the community here in Martin Place today. Get to all the age groups. Make sure that youth are empowered to bring their voice to the front line of the decisions of the future. And we will do that. And we will do it by reaching out right across Australia, using our Australian Myanmar Institute uh, range to get to people everywhere. So we talk to people in groups in Sydney today, in Melbourne yesterday, in Adelaide in the week ahead, across the country. And we'll continue to do that. And we will do it with all the different ethnicities that make up modern Myanmar. One of the things that I was very encouraged by was the decision taken to establish the new government for the future as the National Unity Government. 
We want to let that NUG begin to exercise power now. And so we have some discussions tomorrow about how that might be able to happen. We want to build relationships between the CRPH as the representative of parliamentary government in Myanmar to our own parliamentarians. And as an example of that, it's very encouraging to see Jamie Parker here today, and he'll be talking soon about the parliamentarians, I expect, and what they do to support this in Myanmar. We want to keep alive the distinction that we have in Australia between the executive government headed by the Prime Minister and the parliaments. Parliaments have their own role, and we need to emphasise that for the future too. It's going to be a complicated discussion with people in Myanmar, but one thing I can say with great strength and feeling is that what's been done to government in Myanmar by the military, by the Tapador, cannot last. What they've put in place cannot survive. You can't overturn the wishes of 83% of the population at the elections last November by running a military takeover. You have to concede that the people have the power to make their own informed decision about their country's future. And that's what we will work for. So it gives me great pleasure and great honour to be here with you on this day of prayer. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Christopher Lamb, for the speech. We have another guest speaker. His name is Jamie Parker. He's an MP from Green Party. He's been a strong supporter and advocate for our cause. Jamie Parker, the stage is yours. But I will speak in English because I think it's very important, especially for those people here in Australia, to hear really clearly what is happening in Myanmar and today. I don't just want to give you bad news about what's happening. I want to give you some of the very important positive news. First, can I say thank you? To every single one of you here today, your presence is so important. Your presence sends a message around the world that the 58 million people who are prisoners in their own country are not alone. So please, a big round of applause for everyone. Thank you so much for coming here today. It's so important that you come out and continue this work. And I also want to say thank you to those heroes, millions and millions of people throughout the country who are engaging in the boycott campaign and the campaign for civil disobedience, the CDM. They have had an incredible impact. Please, a big round of applause for everyone in the country. Thank you so much for standing up against this regime. I want to tell you a few positive developments. I'm part of an international group of parliamentarians from around the world. We meet every few weeks. We've met at the highest levels of the United Nations. We met Dr. Sasa. We met other people from around the world. And that group of international members of parliament is growing in strength. It's growing in its visibility. And it's an international, a global movement of parliamentarians across the world who are searching for more and more action, pushing for more action. And I want to tell you a little bit about the successes so far. There are now 40 countries which are embargoing the Myanmar military from arms. 40 countries, including Japan, which is the first time Japan has taken such a strong step. At the G7 meeting, the Japanese were very strong and the G7 countries were very strong. The arms embargo must be implemented globally. The massacres and the terrorization of people in the community must stop. That's a very important step forward and we've also seen an incredible win within the country. Within the country, the banking system is still crippled. Within the country, the government simply cannot collect money, even for things like electricity. The national lottery has failed. People are not buying lottery tickets. The military is not in control. The people are fighting back and winning, and the people will kick out this regime and will make sure civilian rule is restored. I also wanted to highlight some important steps that have happened around the world in terms of sanctions. We know that the ASEAN Declaration was 
are a positive step forward, but even that step forward, even that step forward agreed to by the ASEAN leaders, as soon as the general went back home, he betrayed the commitments that he made. He showed every country in the world, including the United States, including Europe, including China, you cannot do a deal with this regime, you cannot negotiate with them, there is no compromise with terrorists. There is no compromise with liars. And that is an incredibly important point that the world can now see. So now, after ASEAN has made these commitments, they need to step up. They made commitments that if the military did not respond, they would take further action. So today, we call on ASEAN to be serious about their own words, to be serious about the commitments they made, and join the United States, join Europe, join Canada, join countries around the world sanctioning that regime and saying that the military dictatorship must go. I also wanted to highlight something very important as well when it comes to the work here in Australia. Here in Australia, our government has not been good on the issue of taking on these military thugs. All they have done is some small steps, but what I'm very pleased about is now, after protest rallies like this, after letter writing from people like you, the government is now investigating the children and the families of these military generals and making sure we review their visas and what we want to see, every single one of them kicked out of this country. Yeah. Why is it that the democratic freedoms that we enjoy the generals and their leaders want their children to enjoy, but they won't let their own people have the benefit of that. Their own people, they deny the freedoms which they want their children to have. They're not sending their children to Chinese universities. They're not sending their children to Russian universities. They're sending their children to Australia, to the United States and to Europe. And what we will see in the coming months is every single one of those countries saying to those children, you're not welcome here, you're benefiting from the coup, go back and tell your parents, step down and let's see democracy restored. The last thing that I want to say is another thank you, because we're seeing increasing global action. Not enough, there should be more, but we're seeing increasing global action. And we're seeing the military suffocated. They're being suffocated by the lack of money, suffocated by the vast majority, the vast majority of the population opposing them. And we're seeing their money running out. You can see it now on the streets. The cost of a litre of fuel is now over a thousand chats, almost doubling in price. They can't collect money for electricity. They can't collect money anywhere. And they're seeing the currency spin out of control. They are not in control of the economy, they are not in control of the country, and they need to recognise it's time for them to go. Yes. The last point I want to make is just about every single one of you people here. I want to say thank you. Thank you for donating to CDM. Thank you for donating to support the struggle in the country. Our friends over here, groups like this, selling sweatshirts, I stand with Myanmar, every single dollar going into the country to support people standing against this regime. I want to today finish by asking you to do three things. Number one, I want you to keep donating what you can. Keep donating what you can and support those people within the country battling these terrorists. Number two, what I want you to do is write a letter or an email to your federal member of parliament. When you go home, write them an email and say, sanction this regime, no cooperation with the military, all the things you know we've been talking about. Coordinate global sanctions, coordinate a diplomatic effort, recognise the, 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 the shadow government, not this fake government, the real government made up of the NUG, that's a legitimate government, not this military gang of terrorists and thieves. So take those actions and finally, finally what I want you to do is send some good messages. Get some of those positive images of people standing up, of people winning, and spread that on the internet because we are winning. We want to keep morale strong. Those people in the country that are battling so hard, we want them to know that we're here supporting them. We want them to know that they are winning, and we know, want them to know that the people will win. Democracy <laughs> Ashie! Democracy Ashie! Democracy Ashie!
Mann, ey. Jamie Bagawo, Jesus de Mare, now is in the Tunin, eh? New South Wales in the Maji, eh? CRPH, eh? NUG support group to it, eh? The county members elected, eh? Dr. Tuang Shi will pick over, eh? Thank you so much, Jamie Parker, for the speech. Our next guest speaker is Dr. Tuang Shi. He is a founding member and representative of CRPH, NUG support group, and SW. ตัวนั้นเราที่นี่แค่นั้นมาสักการ์ดจังหวัดพิเดตเลยที่ควยสิ่งนี้ควยสิ่งนี้ที่นี่บาลีจันทร์เราลงนี่เลยเราไม่จ
ပါဝင်ကျွန်တော်တကာဖွင့်ထားတော့မှာပဲဟိုဒီဆက်တွယ်ပြီးတော့မှာဒီစီအားဖေးဆက်ပုတ်ခုလေးမှာဟိုပေ
Thank you so much, Dr. Tonal Shui, for the uh, speech. For the next program, I'd like to invite Go Kevin Ao and Go Dan Jo for the for a round of slogan chanting.
For the next program, Dr. Nancy Siwen and Craig Hodges will give, the, give us some speech. They are the founders of Democracy for Burma. ဒီနေ့ဖရီဖော်မြင်မှာစနာပြဝင်တဲ့စုတောင်းမဲမှာကျမစကားပြောခင်ရတဲ့အတွက်ကြေးစီတစ်မှာတယ်ဒီစနာ
protest art. It's a free exhibition. Come and have a look. Bless you all, and thank you very much for today. Thank you so much, Dr. Nancy C. Wayne and Craig Hodges, for the speech and the prayer. Uh, our another program is a prayer, but this time it will be a Chin in Chin language. For that, I'd like to invite Anka Kui Lai. Alo Minglawa, Lukyo Yapule, Nene Kepe Kuchinga, Alo Tide Daime, Pierre Kiri Udojong, Dinia Matinoro, Lama Via Keke, Alo Lutam Hukisa, Tenoro, Alo Yisayara, Petty Malade, Petty Alo Uba Tuji Utene, the Alo Yakate of the Tutan Nine Lays, or Tenoro the Pierre Kepe Tanite, and I don't know Jansa by touching about it. First Corinthians chapter 3, chapter 13, 113, and I will say, Yakure Yung Chi Chim, Yolin Chin Chi Chin, E. Don Bashi, E. Don Baro, and Chi Chim Yata, and Miss Hong Kitty. I didn't talk about dog with General Chi Chiapi. A coaching a Yeti's home saying, Ching, Chi Chim Yata, Yabia, General Bama Vima, Nick Daya, Lutam Pim, Eddie Pitana, General of Piatin, General Tong Dani. เออเจ้าเจ้าเราอตุรกว่าเชียร์ตัวเจ้าสุดท้องใจอ่ะเนาะเจ้าเชื่อเราสุดท้องเนาะบ้านเลเวลเลชั่นตัวบอยป่านัง
The next program is to pay respect to the victim of genocide at Minta City. And we all know that Hornbill bird is the symbol of Chin. And as you can see, there's a origami bird for them. That is to pay tribute to the victims. And while we're paying respect, I'd like to invite Music for Fun band to perform the to perform a song written by them, which portray the event that had unfolded in Minden. Music for Fun ตัวดาจวีเกจาเรปังลีดวียะนั้นนุยเราสุลินจาเดบุลีตูรอเรดพี่ลุมวีทําทาเรละต้องจองเรียลุบองดอเลจาวีตะมองเมียจอสัจ
Thank you, music for fun group for the uh, song. The next program is we have guest speakers for that. They are chair representative. They come from Waka Waka, and the names are Ko Kiang Ten and Ko Kelin Ho, and the group. ไอ้มาชี้เนี่ยชี้ปีกูนี่ก็ตัวเนี่ยอสิงคียาปีจองตัวเนี่ยอ่าตัวอวัตเถียรตัวตัวเนี่ยตัวโตเนี่ยมา
ไอ้ตาหนีโกมองละมาดิอ่าไอ้ไอ้แท้มาปิ๊กๆนี่เนี่ยอยู่ในเหล่าเนี้ยตัวอาชีพบาดิปิ๊กไอ้ดีกาเ
ແລະແນ່ຈິມຍາດີກະຈາລົງໂຕສົ່ງຊົ່ງຫມູ່ດີອັນຕັນເປສາດີຫາລະຍາຍຊິວ່າແລ້ວແຕ່ຕໍຈ
The Bible said, revenge is mine, the Lord said, so don't worry, we'll, we'll win. How do you mean? How do you mean? How do you mean? Thank you so much, Uncle Patrick, for the lovely song. For the next program, Monica Omta will be giving a speech. She will be representing Chin Youth Community. She was born in Mindet and experienced and first hand witnessed the atrocity of military and their war crimes and human rights violations. Today, she's here to share her story. Monica, please come forward. I just want to say uh, thank you for the organizers for um, giving me a chance to speak today. I'm um, Jesu Demare, Jundone, Mintataka, Loku, Winamima, Namibo, Nikwe. I just spoke about three languages just then. <laughs> Um, anyway, so before I start talking about what's happening in Mindat, I would like to share my experience on how I came to Australia. I was born and raised in the beautiful hometown of Mindat. Is it too loud? Is it too loud? Sorry. Um, I was born and raised in the beautiful hometown Mindat um, until when I was uh, 10 years old. I was born and raised there. It's a beautiful home country where I was surrounded by all my family members, including my grandparents. When I was 10, I had to leave the country illegally. I left as an asylum seeker, which I believe majority of you also left that way as well. So I share a lot of your pain right now with you. Sorry, I haven't even started my speech. And um, when I left, I remember the night so clearly. It was pitch black. We got onto a boat with so many other family members as well. Um, we all got onto different boats and as we were leaving, they put black quilts over us so we couldn't get up with small holes so that we could breathe. As we were leaving, there was gunshots. And I can't even imagine the pain that people are feeling right now, but they can't even feel what they're feeling right now because they're in survival mode right now. And so the feeling they cannot even feel and take it in because right now all they care about is surviving. We left, um, we left Burma on a boat, we got to Thailand. And as we were leaving, not many people made it. Some families, they passed. They couldn't even say goodbye to their children, their parents, because they had to keep running, which is, which is exactly what everyone in Burma is experiencing right now. They just have to keep running. They don't even know where they're running towards. They just don't. They're just running away from the military. We had to keep going as we were running. In Australia, you feel safe hearing the sirens. We had to run away from the sirens. Everywhere we hear the sirens, we had to run away from it. And it was muddy, something that you don't forget. And that is just a little bit of the experience that I experienced. There was a storm in Mindat whilst people were running away a few days ago. Killed so many people. There was also, it was very warm a few days ago where they try and get some water from the nearest lake possible. And 
the military was sitting there waiting with guns and killing anyone who goes anywhere near the water. So they either choose to go grab some water for their families who are dehydrated or they die. We kept going. It got to a point where they had to cut my hair. My hair was as long as it is now, when I was 10 years old. But they had to make it so short, they cut it to make me look like a boy so I don't get raped. The beautiful ladies that were here before here, over here, that had tape over their, um, their mouths with signs and bruises, that's to show that young women are being raped right now. They don't, they, they don't have a choice but to suffer. That is a little bit of experience of what I, something that I experience. It's nothing compared to what they're experiencing right now. The reason why they've asked me to speak on behalf of the people in Minda today is because I share that experience with them, at least a little bit. How it all started, why Minda, you're probably wondering. A couple of weeks ago, as everyone is doing right now in Burma, they're doing a peaceful protest. They took some uh, Minda people away to detain them. They promised to return them at a certain date, and they didn't. Imagine your family members, your friends, your brothers, sisters, uncles, aunties, your parents, just being taken away, and they don't give it back to you. They don't give them back to you. How angry and how upsetting is that? So they tried to get our people back, and that's when they brought in all the troops, all the people, including the helicopters with bombs, and that's how they're killing the innocent lives, innocent civilians. They just want to live a peaceful life. And they're not even allowed that. They just want to get their families back. They won't give it back to them. When they try, they get killed. They're using machine guns. Not only are killing people through bullets, but they are also poisonous with chemicals that they're using. The chemicals, even if you're near them, you just pass out and they just kill you. You don't have a choice. In my hometown, Minda right now, my uncles, my aunties, my grandparents, they're running away. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get a chance to say goodbye to them. Two of my uncles are carrying both my grandparents running away on their backs. My grandma had to go to the hospital a few days ago and there's no medication for her. Someone who raised me to be the person that I am today, I didn't even get to thank her or say goodbye to her. My uncles and my aunties are saying that Gunshots, that's all they hear every single second, every minute, every hour of every day. And when they don't hear the shotguns, that's when they're most scared. They're so used to all the shotguns that are so close by that they're fearing the silence because they think that the military is just getting closer and closer and that's how they're going towards them to kill more and more innocent people. Yesterday, from a nearby suburb, a six-day-old baby died from lung disease. A six-day-old! This kid didn't even get a chance to grow up. Didn't even get to say a word to the parents. The parents didn't get to see their, the baby's first step, hear the baby's first word. A six-day-old baby. This is how heartless the military are. They don't care about who you are, where you're from. If you're against them, you're literally either with them or against them. 
to all Australians and my international friends and families and everywhere else. You need to stop saying that you don't want to get involved with the politics. This isn't about politics anymore. This is basic human rights. It's humanity. People's lives are being taken away. You have the freedom of speech and you are the ones that are speechless. And you and the fact that you are so speechless is what's killing more people. So what is it going to take for you to actually do something about it? Our people, the people not just in my hometown, but everywhere in Burma, also known as Myanmar, they don't care about living in a massive home, ex having expensive cars. All they want is to live a happy, humble life. And they deserve that. Just because Burma isn't the country that you were born or raised in or because you've never been there doesn't mean that you shouldn't get involved. If you just care about enough, just someone's life just generally, someone's ability or being able to just deserve a second chance or just deserve a, a chance at life, you should be getting involved. You should be speaking for those people that don't have a chance to because they're so busy running away to save their lives. You have a chance to speak for these people. What's the point of living your life if you can't help the people that need help? I would like to now just request for a minute of silence with three fingers salute for the people in Myanmar especially to my beautiful home, hometown, Minda and our people. If you could please take a kneel or knees and just give a moment of silence. Thank you so much everyone and I would like to let you also know that the team community are organising a fundraiser on Sunday the 6th of June um, from 9am to 11am where they'll provide um, all the Burmese food, that's where you can get to um, know more of them, what's happening, how you can help as well. Um, it's at 39 Billowood Senior Citizen Hall. Thank you. Thank you so much, Monica, for sharing your story. Our next program is a Buddhist prayer. I'd like to invite Van Panyawara. Ashin Nadia and Ashin Panada Jat for the prayer. Also, the only Buddha Bada Tuna guy, see, so we are a pity who shall see a Duka. You don't young each other, Mama Gidema, she does sit on Duka and Alo. Well, 
For our final song, I'd like to invite again Kevin Zia, James, James New, Dan Jok, and the Victory Group to perform the song called Nianjian Yi Dai Boy. After that, we will close the ceremony by playing the song Hello Machine.
下面。